Welcome back to this change series on body image. In this episode, we'll take a look at our industry, the fitness industry. Has our industry been part of the problem? This call is coming from inside the house, y'all. Welcome to Change Series 4, Body Image, where we try to figure out how we got our body image so messed up. I should probably pick up this call, huh? No? Yeah? Here we go. It's no secret. Here at Les Mills, we are big fans of fitness. It brings joy. It positively benefits our physical, mental, and emotional health, and it connects us to people all around us, especially in group fitness. We also recognize that the industry that we are a part of, on many occasions, has been supporting diet culture, and through this potentially creating negative body image for people. So we think it's time to own our past mistakes and move forward differently as part of our diversity, equity, and inclusion commitments. We want to create a space in fitness where all bodies belong and all people can benefit from movement. So where does diet culture show up in fitness? First, fitness is often marketed and sold as an answer to diet culture's demands. The images that we use to draw us in to fitness are generally unattainable by the average person. Fitness and dieting culture are so intertwined that it can often be very, very hard to tell where one ends and where one begins. And this is an issue because we know that diet culture does not promote positive health benefits in general. Multiple studies have shown that feeling body shame is connected to a decrease in physical activity. This is the opposite of what we are trying to accomplish in our industry. In the back of my mind, I always, I still have that high school, early college girl in me that is like, ooh, you know, I don't know, maybe I do need to lose more weight. Even though I look in the mirror and I'm an, an average size, like I'm not super fit, but I'm, I'm fit to do the things I want to do. Um, I'm, I feel strong, I can lift heavy weights, I can do all the things I wanna do, and I should, be, I should be happy with that and not be derailed <laughs> almost by some of these marketing messages that are coming up, coming at me. Well, the number one reason for not going to a gym is lack of time. The second most popular reason is lack of confidence. As fitness professionals, we have the power to make change here. As instructors and fitness members, we can choose to show up differently. And it's as simple as R, R, R. Recognize, reframe, and rejoice. So first, recognize where diet culture, weight stigma, or shame might be showing up for you in fitness. Second, reframe your relationship to movement. Frame exercise as a celebration of what your body can do. Seek motivation that is intrinsic and based on how you feel when you move. And lastly, rejoice in exercise. We know that when we enjoy something, we are much more likely to make that behavior a habit. Find what movement you truly enjoy. What do you love about movement? Going down the path to show just normal body shapes, honing into it would be great because it feels like normal people are now feeling seen, so now they're speaking up. If, if the last several years hasn't taught us anything, representation matters. We need to normalize different body sizes, different heights, different facial features, different hair color, eye color. And the only way that we can do it is that if we expose people to it more and more. And I do think that words matter. Um, I think that as instructors, uh, one of the biggest things we can do is choose words that are affirming um, and um, take the focus of fitness off of weight loss. This series would not be complete without sharing where we, as Les Mills, stand around this topic. And at Les Mills, we strive for a fitter planet, a world where all people feel accepted. 
We know that body size by itself can't and shouldn't be used to judge someone's health and happiness because health is so much more complicated than that. As a group fitness company, we select role models to help us on our mission. And the selection process for this comes down to two things, fitness and talent. People with the fitness to represent our programs at their full potential and the talent to showcase a joy of movement, helping and inspiring people to fall in love with fitness. We are committed to diverse representation. So this selection process is expansive and inclusive. We believe that inspiration can come from any type of person and that everybody brings their own unique history, stories, beliefs, and views to the table, all while striving for a fitter planet. So we look for anyone with the fitness and talent to join our teams, our marketing campaigns, and present our masterclasses. And we'll continue to challenge ourselves to find all types of people to represent with fitness and talent. So I think what I found personally is that being able to recognize it has allowed me to combat it uh, in my own, my own head and really just in my own life. And start putting the positive steps into to accepting who you are or changing little things in life to make you feel better. So it's not about how you look, it's just about how you feel. Because if you start to feel great, and then that ball just starts to roll and that ball just starts to get bigger and hopefully that just sends you on the right path. You know, being able to move, being able to do the things with your family, with your with your friends. Like, are you able to do all the things you want to do? If the answer is yes, great. If the answer is no, then what do I need to change? When someone is so kind and um, loving and warm and a good person like that is so beautiful and it radiates and I would focus on being a better person and becoming beautiful internally as opposed to aesthetically. We are here to help people feel stronger, fitter, healthier and happier. All people, all bodies. Thank you for watching. Let's do this.